encourage you on Saturday, make every effort possible to try to be here Saturday at noon. I think Raji scared people off with the work thing. Is that what it was? So no, it'd be good. It'd be a good time of prayer and Raji's grilling burgers and dogs. So try to make a point if you can come in and we can uh, have a time of prayer in our church. I think uh, Brother Harrison made a good point. I think we're in a time where we need that as a church, where we need to be praying uh, that, that God would help us to, to, to find that right man, that we'd make the right decision. Well, as you're turning to Matthew chapter 5, who are you when nobody's looking? Oh, yikes, right? As Brother Scott said a couple months ago when he was back, oops, I stepped on some toes, right? No, seriously, who are you when nobody's looking? Let's go to Matthew chapter number 5. Let's start verse number 1 this evening. And seeing the multitudes... He went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you for falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to be here in your house tonight. We thank you for every home represented here. Pray that you just bless everyone here. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you give each of us open hearts and minds, that we would apply your word to it tonight, that we'd leave differently than we came. And God, I pray that you would just empower me with, the, the, with your, your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you'd give me the words to speak and help me to say what I shouldn't, don't say what I shouldn't, and say what I should. And God, I pray if there's one here that's lost, that tonight would be the night that they turn to you and repent and ask you to save them. And we'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise for all things. We pray in Jesus' name and amen. So this is the beginning of Jesus' sermon on the mount here in chapter number 5. And Jesus starts his sermon with the Beatitudes. And so I've been kind of rolling this around, thinking, yeah, I'd like to do the Beatitudes. And, uh, and then I listened to Adrian Rogers preach last week on his podcast. At, and he made mention of this. And then 
then Brother Harrison made mention of it uh, when he was preaching, and I thought, oh, I just kind of feel like this would be a good way to go. And so, the, you know, the word for blessed, uh, the Latin word for blessed is beatus, and that's where we get the word beatitude. And so this word just means it's a divine joy. It's a, a perfect, a complete happiness. It's an inner satisfaction that is not the result of, of some kind of outward circumstance. You know, Galatians 5.22, when it lists the fruits of the Spirit, the second one there is joy. You know, that joy is a, a fruit of the Spirit. It's, it's not a work of the flesh. When it lists all the works of the flesh, the joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It's, it's not something that we can manifest in and of ourselves. It's something that has to be manifested there by the, by the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not physical things, but righteousness, and listen to this, and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That, that peace and that joy, that, that inner peace can only come from the, from the Holy Spirit of God. And Psalm 51, 12, David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And up. Hold me with a free spirit. Notice David says, restore unto me that joy of his salvation. You can't lose your salvation as a believer. You know, sin can't take that away from you, but it can rob you of your joy. And, and, and David certainly lost that joy that we have. Nehemiah 8.10 says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We have more boldness in our Christian lives when we're living right and we're doing what we're supposed to. And when, we, when we're not, we lose that joy. We lose that boldness in our Christian walk. Now, each of these beatitudes are, are attributes or, Christ, or characteristics of what we should be in our Christian life. It's what we should be when nobody's looking, right? Uh, Adrian Rogers says it's how we're supposed to live from the inside out. You know, the beatitudes are about the heart. They're attitudes that deal with, the, with our Christian character. It's characteristics that we should have. It's our character. These, they're not about happiness. If, if you're seeking happiness, you're never going to find it. Because happiness is a result of things that happen to you. That's why it's happen, happiness. That, that it's, it's things that happen to you. It's a result. And sometimes we have great things that happen to us. And sometimes we don't have great things that happen to us. But notice in each of these verses that we read... Then it says, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. All of them are blessed in the word A-R-E, are. You know, Christian character is, is who you are, is what you are. But you know, your reputation is what other people think of you. But your Christian character is who God knows that you are. It's, it's, God knows what it is about you. Listen in 1 Samuel 16, 7. It says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. Don't look on the outside. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. That's what God is concerned about. God's really interested in what's on the inside of each of us. He's concerned about that inward man in us. And he's in concerned about that inward man because that inward man is what's going to live forever. And so God's concerned about that. That's what God's concerned about. And so over the next, what I'm intending to do, unless God changes my mind and my heart and sends me a different direction, my intent over the next few Wednesdays is to just talk about these Beatitudes and work our way through and just do a Bible study each Wednesday breaking down the Beatitudes. And so tonight we're just going to do the first Beatitude. We're going to look at verse number three here. We're going to talk about blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And I told Brother Dave, we were sitting here for the service, I said, uh, tonight, you know, I thought I, I prepped a bunch like I always had. And then this afternoon I was really kind of reading through it, studying, making sure I had everything. And, and I'm like, man, it's quick. So we'll be out here quick tonight. And he said, Denise, we have to make your day. So you're welcome. So. <laughs> All right, so poor in spirit here, verse number three. Poor in spirit is not speaking of being financially poor. It's not speaking of being physically poor. But the poor in spirit is, it's not even speaking about those that don't have a backbone or those who are like to have a poor spirit in the sense that they have a defeatist mentality, they're defeated. Uh, 
It doesn't mean the, the fake humility of I'm not worth anything or I can't do it. That's not what a, the poor spirit that it's speaking of here in the Bible. You know, it, the opposite of a poor spirit would be rich in pride. So those that are, that are arrogantly independent, those that are self-sufficient, those that, that have self-praise, look at me. You know, Galatians 6.3 says, For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. That's what this is talking about when it's speaking of poor in spirit. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the, listen to this, and it says, And the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. So that poor in spirit is speaking about being humble, right? It's speaking of the humbleness. It, it means that we should have the right attitude towards ourselves. We should should not think more of ourselves than, than, we, than we should. You know, Isaiah 5, 20 said, 1 says, Woe, it's that judgment, it's that warning. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and are prudent in their own sight. You know, Romans 12, 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. But to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we see many warnings here in the Bible that we should have a humble spirit about us. You know, in Isaiah 66, in verse number 2, it says, But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. That's what we're speaking of here. And in fact, the word poor here is actually could really translate more as beggar. The, to be poor in spirit means that, that you have given up on your self-reliance, that you're fully and you're completely relying on God. You know, it, it would mean that spiritually before God, we're spiritually bankrupt. We have nothing to offer God. In fact, Isaiah 64, 6 says, but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. That we're beggars in the presence of the, of the king. What can we have that we could offer him, the creator of everything? I mean, he owns it all. Who am I in his side? See, God doesn't love us because we're valuable. We're valuable because God loves us. That's why. And we tend to get that backwards. You know, spiritually, at my very, very absolute best, I'm just filthy rags before the king. And those filthy rags that the Bible is referring to here and, and is, is the rags that the lepers would wrap their oozing sores with, that's how, that's at, at my very best, my best five minutes I've ever lived in my life, and you've ever lived in your life, is filthy rags before God. God. And all the way through the Bible, those lepers are a picture of how we spiritually are before God. Right? We have an incurable disease, that sin, that deforms everything that it touches. Right? That it, it's a nasty disease. You know, those sores would ooze and they would hurt and their hands would deform. That's us before, before a holy God. Right? We're, those, we're like those filthy rags. Only the Holy Spirit reveals to us who and what we are before a just and holy God. I mean, none of us are righteous, none of us are righteous enough on our own to make it to heaven. But, you know, if we humble ourselves and we ask Jesus to save us and Jesus to forgive us, it's only then that we can inherit that, that kingdom of God. It's only then that we become a child of the King. You know, John 3, 3, we've, we read it a bunch of times in this place. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That, that we have to humble ourselves before God. We have to be poor in spirit for us to, to inherit the kingdom of God, for us to, to get to the place spiritually that we can be there. Let's go to Luke chapter number 18 together. I think the story of the Pharisee and the publican sum up perfectly what I'm talking about here this evening. Luke chapter number 18.
We're going to start down in verse number 9. Luke chapter number 18. We're in verse number 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Do you see what that means? Look where he starts off here. The, you know, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous. And they despised others. They were so righteous they despised other people. Here's verse number 10. Two men went unto, up unto the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The publicans were tax collectors. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this publican. Could you imagine? I fast twice in a week, and I give tithes of all that I possess. Bragging on himself, right? Verse 13, And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as, as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You don't know, notice here that the Pharisee, he never asked for forgiveness. You notice that? He probably didn't think that he needed to, honestly. I mean, he's so full of himself, right? You know, he doesn't praise God for anything. There's no word of praise anywhere in that. He doesn't give thanks to God for anything. I mean, honestly, his prayer is all about himself, right? I mean, and then he's, he thinks he's better than others. Like almost, I mean, I started giggling because he's like, you know, I'm not like that guy. You know, like at least I'm not as bad as him. You know, and how often are we like that? How often are we like, you know, I'm doing all right in my Christian walk because I'm not as bad as that guy, right? Or, or that guy. And that's kind of what Brother Harrison hit on, on Sunday, right? That, that, I mean, how often are we that way? Pretty often, right? But something I tell the teenagers is it's like, this never changes. When you look at our society now, you know, when you look at the laws, it's okay to kill a baby, right? I mean, according to the law, you know? It's okay to, to do all these other things, you know, right? This, you know, society, what's morally okay with society, that vacillates. It changes constantly. But, you know, that just because the law says it's okay to kill a baby, the Word of God says it's murder, right? And so this never changes. And so this is what we should be comparing ourselves to is the Word of God, not the vacillating things that change in society. And so, you know, when we comp if we're not careful that we compare ourselves to the Word of God, then we may think we're doing okay, just like this Pharisee. But, you know, this is an example of the rich in pride and not poor in spirit, right? I mean, th this man is full of that rich in pride. That he thinks he's doing real well. He's not poor in spirit, you know? But, you know, the publican, on the other hand, he knows he's unworthy you know, before God, right? I mean, he couldn't even look up to heaven, the Bible tells us. Right? He was so shamed. He was so broken over his sin. He's overwhelmed by that guilt and the shame. And he's humble. Right? He repents of his sin, and he asks God for mercy. He realized that there's, there's no, no amount of works that could, that could atone for his sin. Right? There's nothing that he can do before God. He realizes that all he can do is just cry out for mercy. Right? Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. And cry out for that mercy. And you know what? The Pharisee left rejected by God. And, even, and it tells us here, but you know the publican, he left born again. Right? The Bible says he was left justified. He left saved. The publican left in his sins. I mean, the uh, Pharisee left in his sins. You know, the, the, the publican's prayer here is that poor in spirit that Matthew 5, 3 is referring to. It's the one that's speaking of. But, you know, this attitude is, 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 is what God wants us to come to him. It's how God wants us to come to him. Not just for salvation, but for everything. That's how we should be approaching God, that poor in spirit. You know, God blesses the poor in spirit because they're blessable. So here, this is, I'm literally, I'm done. Listen to 1 Peter 5, 5. 1 Peter 5, 5, good way to close tonight. 
Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. But listen to this. Here's where I'm going. And be clothed in humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You know, when we go back to the passage that we read tonight, it says that for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased. You know, that, that publican really had himself exalted. But when really he was pretty low when he left, right? I mean, spiritually, he was rock bottom. But you know, the man that, that, that he humbled himself, it says, shall be exalted. You know, I mean, he's a child of the king now, right? I mean, he was, he was saved. He humbled himself before God, and God will exalt him in due time. And so tonight, who are you when nobody's looking? Are you poor in spirit? Are you rich in pride tonight? Let's close in prayer this evening. You're welcome, Denise. All right. <laughs> Let's close. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here. We thank you again for your word and for the opportunity to glean from it. And Lord, I pray that you give every single one of us a healthy hunger and thirst for your word, Lord, that we would be in it daily gleaning from it. And I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to want to live for you. And, and Lord, uh, to, to help us to be that poor in spirit, that we would be humble before you. Lord, that we would constantly repent when we need to. That we would repent of those sins, that we wouldn't harbor sin in our life. And God, that you would just change us more and more into the, to the image of you and your son, Lord, that you would help us, help us every, every single day to have that poor in spirit. And God, if there's one that's lost tonight, give them an opportunity to accept you again before it's too late. And Lord, we love you and we thank you for your goodness. Pray in Jesus' name and amen.